Hornbill, there may be occasions when you need to upload users in bulk instead of adding them manually. For example, if you're at the start of your switch on and you are uploading users for the very first time, or if you have frequent additions of users to your organisation and you need to add a lot of them all at once. We actually present the ability to be able to do this via a CSV import. Now, to access this, it's where you would actually go and manually add your users as well. So if we, we're in the admin tool, on my instance here, if we go to system, organisational data and users, this is our user screen and this is where you can see how many people and who has already been added into your system. Now to do that and have a look at our current stats, you can see in terms of the application users we currently have, there's 23 out of 60 subscriptions we've got. And the basic users, we've only got one basic user out of an unlimited amount that we provide in Hornbill. Now just to again to re-emphasize the difference between an application user and a basic user, an application user is one of your subscribed users. So these are typically your analysts or your people who are going to be logging into the user app and dealing with customers' requests on a day-to-day -day basis. Your basic users are internal members of staff that you're going to be supporting. So they're going to be the ones either logging onto the portal or simply phoning up and contacting you with their requests and incidents. There is also a third type of customer that we call a contact. Now a contact is an external customer. So this is someone who is not part of your organisation, but you may still be supporting them or their organisation. Now, these are not covered as part of this user import. They're actually dealt with in a separate application, and that's all done in the user app. So we, this is not to import contacts. This is just for the import of your application users and basic users. So if we want to do the bulk import, we're going to come and click on this green button here, which is the Upload Users button. And we've got two options. We can either select our CSV file for upload, but we haven't populated yet. And over here we can download the template that's actually required for Hornbill. So I'm going to do that. And once we download it, you can see it's actually a CSV that gets downloaded down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an already populated one. So you can have a look at some of the headers and the type of data that you might want to fill in. So this is one that I'm, I populated earlier on. And you can see it's fairly basic information. There's only about nine or ten different um, columns for you to populate here. Um, and again, a lot of these would be self-explanatory, but just to talk through a few of the key ones, user ID is the unique reference for each of your users in Hornbill. So this does need to be unique. And you can see that this is typically um, a fairly user-friendly name. In my example, I've got the first name and uh, their first letter of their surname. One thing to bear in mind here, if you're looking to use single sign-on, then this will need to match the primary SAM account name or whatever your customer is logging into on their network. So um, do ensure that when setting user IDs and if you're using the bulk import for that purpose. Name um, is their full name. Now password, password does need to be populated with something. If you are looking to just use the username and password via the standard Hornbill login screen, then obviously you may want to set this to something different for each of your users. If you're going to be using single sign-on, then whatever their network password is will override whatever you put here. So it really could be anything because they would never even get to that login screen as it's single sign in them on. First name, last name, job title and phone and the mobile. These are all um, fairly, as I say, self-explanatory. So you populate them if you want. One thing to mention here is that some of these are mandatory fields. So the user ID, name, password, first name and last name. A mandatory along with email, role, and at the end we've got user, which I will come on to, user type, which I'll come on to in a moment. So, um, yeah, I'm sure to populate those mandatory ones. Both the phone numbers aren't mandatory. Now, when we're looking at the roles, this is quite important because this governs the access they have for the, your application users, the functionality they've got in the user app, and for the basic users, um, whether or not they can actually access the service portals or not. So looking at our top two users, these are actually application users. And just hopping over to the user type option, this is where you set, whether it's an application user or a basic user, uh, lowercase user or lowercase basic, just like I've done here. But the roles um, will really depend on what access you want that particular individual to have. Now, we've got a whole section in the admin tool called roles, so you can have a look there. 
One good other option that I suggest is to have a look at our wiki. Now, if I just navigate back to the wiki here, um, we've got lots to do with roles there, but this is a good page called What Service Manager Roles Exist. And from here, you can actually scroll through and have a look at which roles refer to which functionality, which buttons they're going to get access to. So it's a nice place to start if you've never seen this before. And down the bottom, we've got some example service manager user roles. So if you've got a standard service desk analyst, you might want to give them these three roles. If you've got a full-on administrator, if we click on, a, you've got the show more, show um, read more and show less options, you can see you might give them the admin role, which gives them access to everything. So have a look at here. This is what you can use to populate your, um, your role section on the user app. Sorry, in the user import. And the other key thing is you can see I'm using the colon as the separator. So if you've got more than one role you're uh, assigning to one of your users, ensure to use that colon as the separator. If you don't, then it will fail when you do the import. The two basic users have just got the same, and these are really the two standard roles for your basic users, which are basic user role, colon, self-service user, and that will give them access to the portal as well. So once you're happy and once you've populated your sheet, Simply come up, uh, give, save it, and then what we're going to do is navigate back to our admin tool. And this time I'm going to click the green button on the left hand side called Select CSV File, which I've saved onto my desktop here. It takes a few seconds, it processes the users, and you can see the four people in my sheet have now been successfully imported. Now, I can, if there was any errors with this, if there's a problem with my CSV or if there was a problem with something I've done, it's quite explicit and it tells you what the reason for that failure would be. So if you had put in the wrong role um, or if you had not put in a code on it, it would actually tell you that and then you can go back and check your CSV and ensure you've got it all right. To check that they've all been imported correctly, I'm going to click on the users option. Um, you can see there r &A is at the top. Um, also you can now see that my um, subscriptions have gone up from 23 to 25 of 60 and the basic users have gone up from 1 to 3. So that's all looking good. Um, if we click on Aaron, just as the very first one who was in there, all of his details are populated as per my spreadsheet, and the roles have all been populated correctly as well. So that's all good news. Now, a couple of a uh, couple of key points to bear in mind when you're using this um, data import utility. Uh, the first one is this is this is a create function only, so it will only create new accounts. It will not update existing ones. If you have any updates of existing ones that need to happen, then I suggest you have a look perhaps at our ALDAP import utility, which you can find on our wiki, which does this kind of role, but directly from any ALDAP um, integration that you may have. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, manually updating users. Um, this utility will not do that. The second thing to bear in mind is that when you go into um, a user in the user app, you may notice they have some extended information, for example, manager or interests and bits and pieces like that. Anything additional, um, again, cannot be done through this utility. This is quite a basic utility just to get your user information imported. So any extended information that you need would be either need to be manually updated or you would need to speak to a Hornbill product specialist who could advise you of the best way of doing that. And thirdly and finally, um, if you do have any issues and you need to delete those particular users, um, what you can do, if you're logged in as the super user admin account on your instance, you will have the option to archive them. So if I wanted to delete Aaron, I can click this archive. Now, I must emphasize this should only be used as a last resort. And once you've started logging calls against your users in Hornbill, you should never ever delete a particular user. If you need to, um, if, you know, if they're no, no longer needed on your system, you should come into them and click on the status is archived and that will free up the license so you can see it's freed up the subscription there and it will uh, maintain all the integrity of all the calls they've logged previously so only use that delete option as a super user um, once you've logged in um, and you're doing this type of import and then you know they have never logged or never used the system before so it's a last resort there one other thing like, um, just to mention is that you must be, have an admin account to be able to come in and use this particular utility.